Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Mars Outlook across May and June. I wanted to do an episode just on Mars because Mars will be debilitated from 10th May to 30th June. And those of you who are regulars on the channel, you know that wherever possible, I try to match my outfit to the planet. And I haven't made a mistake, I am wearing pink. Now hear me out, we've got Mars red, and Mars will be debilitated, right? Which means Mars will be in Cancer, Mars will be lauded by the moon, the moon white. So I'm wearing pink. And I thought what we could do is we could take a look at this energy just across 10th May to 30th June. We'll have a look collectively. We'll have a look at all of you individually. If you would like to skip to your mini report, you can go right ahead. But those of you who'd like to take a look at what is Mars debilitation? What does it mean? What does it symbolize? We're going to take a look at that right now. So Mars is debilitated roughly every two or so years. This is a common occurrence. It's nothing really to worry about. But what interests me with this particular Mars debilitation is that Rahu is in Aries. And this is a bit of a long stretch uh, that Mars will be debilitated. So that's from 10th May to 30th June, 2023. Now where Rahu has been in the Zodiac, Rahu has been in kind of, Rahu has been lauded by the faster moving planets for quite a long time, for many, many years actually. You know, uh, a really long time when you look, if, you, if we are to look back as far as Rahu in Libra, you know, well, and the last time Rahu was lauded by Mars, let's take a look at that. That was, that we're looking at, okay, we're looking at about sort of 2011, 2012. Okay, so those years, that's when Rahu was lauded last by Mars. And then we've had, you know, Rahu being lauded by these faster moving planets. So Rahu, over the last many, many years, has, when it's been lauded by a debilitated planet, that debilitation has probably been on for maximum one month, right? So that's that's pretty interesting. So we are going to have an interesting time, I do believe, with this uh, planet being debilitated for so long. This actually got me to look into when, you know, could we have quite a long debilitation? And yes, we can have in 2027, June 2027, that's going to be kind of interesting because Saturn will be debilitated. Saturn will be the Lord of Rahu. And that's for Rahu's whole transit, I do believe. Or is it part of the transit? I think it's part of the transit. Let me take a look now. Uh, yes. Okay, so not the full transit, which is good. It'll just be a few months, I think. So that's not too bad. I'll take a look and I'll put the information up on the screen when I'm editing. But we're up for, you know, quite quite an extended period of time here where the Lord of Rahu, where Jupiter is also seated, that will be debilitated. So I've got here in a very general sense, what does a Mars debilitation mean? for all of us. And this is just at a really high level, very general overview sense. So I've got here, it can mean that defenses are down, it can mean that there's less power to act, it can mean that power is lower, it can mean that energy is not as high. It can also mean things like we'd rather be more in intellectual than physical as well because we've got Mars being ruled by the moon. So rather than, and you know, we've got Saturn in Aquarius at the moment. And I have been saying that this is a time of protest. This is a time of unrest. This is a time where the people are gotten, the focus will be on the people, you know, and the people are, you know, definitely going to want to do something. And we're seeing that, you know, in Paris at the moment, people are really protesting there. Uh, what I'm seeing here, though, with Mars being debilitated is that protest energy may not be so physical, 
that's a possibility here that's one way that this could play out now generally in a birth chart how would I look at Mars debilitation if I see a debilitated Mars well definitely if it's in a man's chart I know that I'm dealing with quite a gentleman someone who's quite sophisticated someone who is probably quite intellectual so he's not going to be the rough and tough you know butch kind of guy he's not going to be that sort of uh one of my friends calls a macho nacho uh, that's her term i don't know she's portuguese that's why she has that term but uh, yeah i mean uh, it's, it's not that kind of guy it's it's more of a, a gentleman someone who'd rather talk it out someone who'd uh you know rather figure things out with the mind and definitely intellectual people people who would rather debate you know they'd, they'd rather talk it out that's that's one of the things I've seen there with uh, a debilitated Mars so now Mars is debilitated from 10th May to 30th June 2023 Mars will of course be touring through Cancer okay as pr per the traditional zodiac but as per the nakshatra system we're going to have Mars going through Punavasu, Pushya nakshatra and Ashlesha nakshatra now I found all of this to be quite interesting I think when Mars goes through Ashlesha that could be a time where we see more tension in the world and I'll tell you when that is let me I didn't write that down in my notes but I'll give you the exact date so that will be okay that's about sort of the 8th of June onwards to about 30 June that's where I'm seeing Mars is in Ashlesha Nakshatra and yeah I think the energies could be getting quite a bit more interesting at that time uh, I've got here on 30 June Mars will be in Ashlesha and on a Gandanta point the other thing to note about 30 June is that moon will also be debilitated in Scorpio in Vishaka Nakshatra on the 30th of June so I've got a note here that this could be a day where planetary power is especially low uh, and I've got the note here as well Friday 30th of June take extra care the other things that we have going on in the sky 30th of June is we've got Saturn and Mercury both in their own signs both in air signs so this could be a time where debate is running quite high or people are really talking about things arguing things trying to figure things out so we've got Saturn and Mercury in their own signs in air signs communication is very strong at this time but maybe action is low is is one of the ways that I'm reading that got a note here about Mars debilitation in the collective yeah Mars in Ashlesha is where we can see maybe the Ukraine war will be more talked about or maybe there's more uh, action there to do with the Ukraine war and I talked about this before many many months ago when I covered the topic of the war I did say that you know things I th I'm pretty sure I said things will start to heat up again I think in June and what I sense is that when Venus retrogrades let's take a look at that when Venus retrogrades she will retrograde she'll come very close to Mars and then she will back off and I think when she backs off that is when the energy changes yeah see July could be difficult as well June July these two could be quite difficult months but then Venus will start to retrograde I think it's 23rd July and I feel like that could be when she moves back into Cancer and Mars keeps moving forward I think that could be a time where say for example the tensions really ease or I'm hoping I mean I, I don't want there to be war any day I want things to stop now but from what I see of the planets that's one of the things I'm thinking here and that I mentioned this many many months ago but I'm saying the same thing again um, yeah I've got here from 8 June to 30 June Venus will be coming closer to Mars Venus and Mars together has been an astrological signature of this war yeah I, I have seen that 
got the note here protests could be slowed down or weakened by this debilitation that is something that we can all take a look at and, and especially I mean I guess we can keep our eyes on on France and, and Paris and just see okay maybe will the protests calm down that will in that will they be less physical is what I'm seeing potentially so things could be less physical maybe things will be more you know debate verbal meetings negotiating these are more kind of uh, Mars in Cancer type activities I would say yeah I've got here protests could be more in the form of discussion or debate instead and I've also got the note that this could be a time where more laws are passed regarding transitioning genders gender is such a big topic in the world right now my goodness uh, you know on my dashboard a lot of videos come up and I've been watching and there is a lot of Piers Morgan videos come up on my so I do watch his stuff I mean I, I know a lot of British people can't stand him uh, I've been watching the content and you know it, it kind of keeps me in touch with the world I don't watch TV but you know YouTube does Put a lot of TV like things on my dashboard I do watch them sometimes so through watching his episodes I've come to learn of all these new terms like one I've got here is toxic masculinity I had no idea there was such a thing uh, gender fluidity and transphobic again transphobic that's a brand new word there's all these kind of brand new words and concepts in our world and that is a big topic right now and I think that that topic is going to get even bigger across uh, this Mars debilitation time. There's going to be more people talking about it, debating about it, you know, trying to figure it out, trying to understand what's going on here. And yeah, I can definitely see that that will continue to be a really big topic. I know on one of the Piers Morgan episodes, he talked about sport quite a bit. And that did get me thinking because we've currently got Mars in Gemini. And that got me thinking about Mars in you know, being lauded by Mercury. And yeah, that is quite interesting that that is being <clears throat> debated quite heavily at this time because Mars and Mercury are two planets that I would look for in the chart of an athlete. I started thinking about what would I look for in the chart of an athlete and definitely I mean in some athletes charts you, know, you can see Sun and Venus conjunct and things like that. Uh, there are amazing combinations for, for various athletes but definitely um, you know Mars and Mercury are two great planets as well. Mars is that hands-on effort or physical effort and drive ambition determination we've also got mercury which is competition and rules okay all that kind of thing so i was watching this episode that piers morgan was talking about you know um i think it was something about men going into women's sporting things like competitions and things like that i have no idea about any athletic type things I was, I was trying to think and rack my brains about what I could study or research in history anyway what I came to was thinking about Billie Jean King and how a very long time ago so I looked this up this is actually 1973 she was involved in this thing called the battle of the sexes and she actually played a guy on the tennis court and she won and I thought, oh, I should check out what astrology was going on at that time. And it's really interesting when this battle of the sexes in 73 was being debated, they did, so Bobby Riggs, I think was the guy, and he did the first match against a woman. He did that while Mars was in Gemini. And I thought that was really, really interesting how we've currently got Mars in Gemini and we're debating the same thing we're debating okay well you know who can compete in what sport and, and rules and all this kind of thing and what got me thinking was that I'm sure there are some sports that you could just make gender neutral like I thought about archery and I thought surely that shouldn't matter too much or you know maybe I don't know badminton or 
table tennis, there must be sports where it, it doesn't matter too much, the physicality of a person. But then I started thinking about boxing, for example, and boxing is a sport where, and that's just a male sport, or maybe there must be, it must be a female sport too now, but it's like, that's where they actually define physical types. So you've got featherweight, lightweight, medium weight. Uh, I looked this up the, the other day and it had like welterweight, it had all the heavyweight, you know, so, so they don't let a giant guy in the ring with, with someone who, uh, you know, is, 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 is well, built like me, right? You know, <laughs> like you couldn't, you couldn't allow that kind of thing. So I'm sh that I'm sure a lot of these things can just be worked out, you know, uh, in a in a sensible way. And I think I mean what we've got, and we know this here on this channel. We know that there is an energy on the planet that is purposefully going into some sensitive topics, and it's trying to cause division. It's trying to cause problems. It's trying to um, get humanity riled up and divided and opposed. And I was thinking about 1973 and I was thinking that if I was an astrologer back then and I had to say, what would Gemini, you know, Mars and Gemini be like in 2023? There's no way I would predict that we'd be talking about the same stuff, uh, you know, and, and yeah, there's no way. I, I, w I would have predicted something like, well, We'll be so much more evolved and you know that's my idea of the future is that we'll be more evolved and we'll be more one and we'll be more united but yeah it does seem that uh, his history does repeat well i mean i don't know it's kind of i see things have got worse really with other as i say this energy that's kind of trying to get into sensitive areas and uh you know yeah, create create problems, create division. Uh, that's what this energy is doing. And I'll just tell you very quickly, I know we're running out of time here, I should get on with the mini reports, but on this topic of this energy that's in our world, and, and let's call them the elite or the establishment or whatever, this elite energy that's getting into these areas and trying to cause division and trying to create problems. I was thinking about this the other day that, you know, that energy is acting in such desperate ways that it truly is on its way out and when I was in Sydney at our place we've got an orange tree I saw my dad plant that tree and you know I saw the tree grow and many years passed and then the tree started to give fruit and it's been such a wonderful tree we love that tree and uh, well while I was back there I was observing how like sometimes the tree some some of the fruits will just drop off the tree there'll be like two or three but they all the fruits would remain on the tree they were all happy being there and they would ripen and grow and we'd have to pick them off but the ones that would just naturally fall off and hit the ground my mum would bring them in and you know she'd be busy cutting something out and she told me oh this always happens. She says the tree always ejects the bad fruit. So if there's a fruit that is diseased or dying or has, you know, bugs in it or whatever, the tree will just naturally eject that orange and just, just get rid of it. And that's what I think is happening in the world. This energy that's getting into sensitive areas and trying to cause division and doing all that stuff, it knows that nature wants it out. And that, that is what I truly believe. I do think that the world is being cleared of these energies that, yeah, it, it's, they're, they're getting desperate uh, is what I'm seeing. And I think they won't be around much longer. And if you look at futurists like Diana Cooper and various people who talk about what the world is going to be like in 10, 20, 30 years time. I do think we can safely predict that, yeah, a lot of these dark energies, controlling energies, the energies that are trying to divide and, you know, just 
yeah that, that we know are not good those energies they can't they 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 aren't going to be here i don't think in in 10 20 30 years let's see i mean i think when pluto moves into aquarius here in this idea of vedic system that's 2039 we're going to have a very different world a uh, very 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 different world and we're seeing the the breakdown the dismantling it's happening now so yeah let's see how we we get on with this uh with this mars energy you know with the debate that's going on about all these different things but yeah anyway guys i think let's get into the mini reports let's see how this mars energy is going to play out for you personally all right we are now going to welcome aries aries welcome thank you so much for joining now this is aries ascendant aries moon or aries sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so mars is a benefic for you okay and mars rules your first and eighth houses across may and june he's going to transit your fourth house so that is now let me just double check that is 10th may onwards so across 10th may and all of june he's going to transit your fourth house so if you are moving or engaging in home renovations of any kind know that this could possibly take a bit longer or it could require more money you know it could just be inconvenient if you can delay your move till after say for example the 30th of june that could be good but if you have to move do it it's not it's not going to be a problem but it just might be inconvenient or cost more or there'll be some hurdle or challenge or something like that um, so that's just something to be mindful of i also have the note here take care in relationship with your mother mars casts fourth aspect onto ketu in your seventh house which could energize your partnership uh, you might be able to resolve a conflict at this time okay that's through open and honest communication right now mars is casting eighth aspect onto saturn in your 11th house so this could motivate you to go after opportunities and to expand your network it's kind of like an injection of energy doing energy into that 11th house of yours so perhaps you've been you know using saturn in that place to strategize or to plan here's some great mars energy an injection of doing energy which could have you acting more on some of your plans at this time aries you've got a good thing going on here this is a nice transit for you thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome taurus taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is taurus ascendant taurus moon or taurus sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology now mars for you is neutral energy it rules your 12th and 7th houses and across may and june so that's from 10th may onwards and all of june he transits your third house so you've got really great confidence here at this time you've got confidence to move forward with your plans this is actually really good energy to put yourself out there to speak up to present your ideas to go for jobs attract new clients you know this is a really good time where your efforts can pay off now mars casts fourth aspect onto ketu in your sixth house which could bring energy to legal cases perhaps if there's a legal case that needs progress or you know that needs to move forward this mars aspect could help with that um, it could also help you to compete in the marketplace as well or if you're competing for a job or new clients or something like that there's something about you being engaged and productive and getting results this is good now mars is casting eighth aspect onto saturn in your 10th house so again this is good for your career this is good for your reputation in the world it's an injection of some doing energy into a space where perhaps saturn has been strategizing has been planning now you've got some doing energy come in you might be able to get some things done i've got the note here just be careful with your words and how you phrase things uh, you know it's good to be diplomatic 
think of things from the other person point of view all that type of thing but overall this is looking really good so Taurus thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining this is Gemini ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now Gemini Mars is a functional malefic for you uh, Mars rules your 11th and 6th houses and across May and June so that's 10th May onwards and all of June he transits your second house okay this is not the best energy for a time with the family uh, if you're able to carve out me time free up some space do your own thing you know up your meditation across this period or start meditating across this period right uh, I'll put on the screen um, my voucher code on free you might want that you might want to download my meditation uh, tutorial you can get that free of charge okay um, yeah you might you might want to do that at this time uh, let's have a look what else you got going on Mars, Mars will cast fourth aspect onto Ketu in your fifth house so definitely take care in your relationships with your children uh, or those you work with as well if you're a boss of employees just go easy on them it's like go easy on the kids go easy on people you work with but this is there is some good energy here for creativity so that's nice like if you want to be a bit solo do your own thing do your creative thing get ahead in your personal passion projects things that you love this is a good time for that now Mars is casting eighth aspect onto Saturn in your ninth house so be careful in your dealings with authorities or those in positions above you this also applies to relationship with father as well you might want to take care in that relationship with him and I've got the note here a way to handle this time is actually via Saturn you know be humble work hard and don't expect too much from other people uh, at this time but as I say it is good personal energy for you and your creativity if you want to be creative and you know um, working with the energy in that way this could be a really good time so Gemini thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Cancer Cancer welcome thank you so much for joining this is Cancer Ascendant Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now Mars is a functional benefic for you Mars rules your 10th and 5th houses now across May and June so that's from 10th May onwards and through all of June he transits your first house so this is going to be a bit of a mixed bag I think for some of you so do, for some of you this could be good but then for some of you uh, you know this, this could be a bit tiring right so if you feel tired then rest but if you, you this is an energy that you're going to want to observe with your physical body for some of you it might be energizing you might have that get up and go and that's great so see how it is for you but if you feel tired definitely rest I have the note here this is a good time to work gently with your physical body so pick up any exercise routines that you may have abandoned uh, you know if there's some good light gentle exercise you know that you can fit into your daily routine that that could be a good thing at this time now Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu Ketu in your fourth so something at home might need your attention uh, and this could even be just quite practical this could be like items at home that need repair that kind of thing but this could also be your relationship with your mother as well or something to do with how you nurture yourself there's something around those areas that may need attention Mars is casting eighth aspect onto Saturn in the eighth so this could require you to rethink shared assets or rethink relationships or situations where there are dependencies so some certain things could be made aware to you at this time where you realize wow I, I'm actually quite you know dependent on this thing but that's not going to be good for my future kind of thing there are certain things here that you might need to rethink or re-strategize but other than that cancer 
Remember, Mars is a functional benefic for you and this could be a good time, definitely when it comes to working with the physical body, working with your health, routines, you know, feeling good, all of that, that, that there's good energy there for that. All right, thank you so much, Cancer. And we are now gonna welcome Leo. Leo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo, Ascendant, Leo Moon, or Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Mars, Mars is a great planet for you. Mars is a functional benefic for you. Mars rules your ninth and fourth houses. And across the month of May and June, so that's from 10th May onwards and all of June, Mars will transit your 12th house. So during this time, because Mars is transiting your 12th, you might actually feel a bit restless, uh, even though I was just kind of raving about Mars being a benefic for you. But yeah, you might feel restless. Um, you might find that there are some nights where it's hard to sleep at night. That could be possible. So definitely exercise during the day and that can tie you out in a nice way that helps deepen your sleep. It's a great time to read books, explore spirituality, find new teachers or gurus. And this could also be a time where you take up a new physical practice. So maybe there's a type of yoga that you've never done or qigong or something some new exercise thing that you want to try. Uh, this could be a good time for that. Now Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in your third house. This is great energy for you to promote yourself, present your ideas, get work, you know, get a job, win business, get your thing going, right? Whatever it is. Mars is casting eighth aspect onto Saturn in your seventh house. So your relationship with your spouse could actually be really challenging at this time. There might be some issues that need to be resolved through discussion. And I've got the note here, take care with how you phrase things. So yeah, they could, you could find that there is some stuck place in your relationship with your significant other, that it requires attention or it requires talking about it or but there's some there could be some stuckness or something that that just needs dealing with there but leo it is actually looking like some pretty good energy here for you especially if you decide to work with a physical body and pick up some new exercise routine or something like that all right well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome virgo virgo welcome thank you so much for joining so this is virgo Ascendant Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now Mars is a functional malefic for you. Mars rules your eighth and third houses. And across the month of May and June, he transits your 11th house. So this is from 10th May onwards and all of June. He's going to be in your 11th house. Okay, so even though Mars is a functional malefic, planets, when they transit through the 11th, they're great. So Mars transiting through your 11th house, it really should be good for you. Uh, it should be a good time to socialize. It should be a good time to expand your network, pick up new clients, expand your ability to take in more new opportunities. But just knowing that Mars is a functional malefic for you, I would still say just take care in how you speak in all your relationships and consider both sides of any argument. But ultimately, every planet that transits through the 11th, the 11th is like, you know when you pass go on the Monopoly board and every single little character gets to pick up $200? Uh, the, the go thing is like the 11th house. Like everyone that you know you pick up good stuff from the 11th house so so this is a good good transit for you but let's have a look elsewhere now mars is casting fourth aspect onto ketu in your second house that could be challenging uh, because mars energy there in the second not great so definitely take care in all family relationships there could be arguments that crop up at this time now mars is casting eighth aspect onto saturn in your sixth house this could be good energy for your work, definitely, as Saturn transits very well here. And Mars energy into the sixth is good, and that's really good as well. So um, it's great energy for your work. 
equally observe see how it goes I mean it could manifest a challenge at work to you but I am seeing good work energy for you but I am seeing with the family side of things that could be where the challenges are across this time Virgo this is beautiful energy especially just the just the fact that Mars is passing through your 11th it is going to bring in uh, some results here so keep working Virgo keep being amazing all right thanks so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining now Mars is a neutral energy for you Mars rules your seventh and second houses and across the month of May and June he's going to transit your 10th house so this is from 10th May onwards and all of June he transits your 10th house now Mars transitioning through transitioning transiting it's a transit it's not a transition maybe Mars is transitioning I don't know these are interesting times uh, Mars transiting through your 10th house can be very good for work yeah no definitely Mars does well in the 10th there Mars uh, well Mars exalts in Capricorn um, let's have a look here this is a good time for you to put your head down and get lots of work done uh, you can be very productive at this time so do your work without expecting the rewards right which is what Krishna is always saying isn't it Lord Krishna is always saying do your work and don't expect any rewards leave the rewards to me Krishna says I will sort everything out so I've got here now for you I can actually give some timing as to when the rewards are coming so do your work without expecting rewards the rewards will come when Mars moves through Leo okay so this is a time where you just Mars is in the 10th house there just um, you know do the work the rewards are coming all right now Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in your first house take care of your physical health exercise to deepen your sleep okay so if you want a good night's sleep just do some exercise during the day you'll you'll sleep really well um, the other thing about Mars casting aspect onto Ketu in the first this could be tiring this could be draining so if you are tired rest okay if you don't feel like doing the exercise or, or that then just don't don't push it now Mars is casting eighth aspect onto Saturn in your fifth house so this could cause some challenge at work and or increase expenses in some way okay so just take care of that but otherwise it's looking quite good for you Libra thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining now Mars is a neutral energy for you Mars rules your first and sixth houses and across the month of May and June Mars is going to transit your ninth house so this is from 10th May onwards and all of June he's going to transit your ninth house so Mars transiting through the ninth can cause run-ins with authority someone senior to you could be challenging or you know you have to confront someone uh, senior to you this could also be to do with your relationship with your father as well that relationship could be tense at this time but on a positive note you do have the energy to study new things find new teachers and get the answers you've got the energy to polish up your skills and seek the answers and get them now Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in your 12th house this may make you want to procrastinate actually you might feel restless with this energy or you might feel you want an escape or you want to get away uh, exercise could really help here Mars casting eighth aspect onto Saturn in your fourth house could highlight some issue at home or even some issue between your parents at this time because don't forget we've got that ninth house transit there so there could be it could be that maybe your parents there's tension between your parents or something like that and I've got here there there is energy but there is a stuckness there could be and where I'm seeing I think the stuckness or there's some situation or there's something where it's, it just becomes apparent that things are stuck um, that could be to do with your home home life somehow and that could be in regards to parents at this time so if there is some kind of stuck situation uh, just try and give it some space and you know 
pick up your meditation practice, meditation, space, all these things, you'd be amazed how just a regular daily spiritual practice will start to, you know, if there are knots and things in your life, they'll just start to unravel, things start to smooth out. It's pretty amazing. Meditation is incredible. I can't speak highly enough about it. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, Scorpio. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Mars is a functional benefic for you and Mars rules your 12th and 5th houses. So across May and June he transits your 8th house and this is 10th May onwards and all of June. So Mars transiting through your 8th house can help you transform and alchemize things in your life. What areas of your life need some kind of giant transformation or alchemy? Whatever area that is, you can really make that happen at this time. Now for you, Sagittarius, this is an excellent time to do clutter clearing. If you've noticed that things have really been piling up around your place and you haven't used those things for two or three years, you know, and that's the thing. I'll come back to my place. I've been away for three years and yet I've got many shelves. I'm still going through one by one and I'm clutter clearing. So I'm actually doing that work anyway. But um, I've got here, yeah, get rid of old things that are holding you back. Now is the time. Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in your 11th house. This might bring new energy to your social scene. Uh, it could also help you attract new clients as well. And that's good because Ketu is a bit of a suppression energy there in the 11th. So this little injection of Mars energy is great for you because it might just bring something um, if things have been getting a bit routine or stale. Now Mars is casting 8th aspect onto Saturn in your 3rd house. This is great energy to you know, help you bring some action to your plans. The other thing is that this is Saturn in the third. So this could also be good for friends as well. It might um, help, you know, yeah, this might be social energy. Perhaps you'll be catching up with people, meeting people. Equally, this could indicate something to do with friend friendships or friends or siblings, and it could indicate some kind of stuck issue or something that needs dealing with because it's that Saturn Mars kind of stuckness sort of thing due to this aspect. So um, that is something to watch out for. But ultimately this is really nice energy here for you Sagittarius, especially if you use it to get organized and get rid of the old things. All right, well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now Mars is a functional malefic for you guys. Uh, Mars rules your 11th and 4th houses and across May and June he transits your 7th house. So this is 10th May onwards and all of June. Now Mars transiting through your seventh house can test you in relationships with other people. Okay, This can be your spouse, this can be the person you're married to, uh, can be the person you're in a business partnership with, this can be partnerships of all kinds. But I'm actually going to broaden that and I'm going to say this is you and the other. Okay, So I have the note here, try not to expect too much from others during this time uh, and instead focus your focus on your work and focus on what you can expect from yourself and, and focus your spiritual work on yourself as well okay um, yes yeah, this, this is not a time to be expecting too much from other people Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in your 10th house this might bring energy this might bring energy to your career I think I was saying yep which will help kickstart things or if you need a bit of a kickstart in your in your career. Uh, we do have some Mars energy going into the 10th house there. Ketu in the 10th is 
this is what I've found personally. I have found that Ketu in the 10th will sustain, it can sustain what's going on. So if you have a job, Ketu in the 10th house will usually help you keep that job. Uh, but then it can, Ketu in the 10th can, um, yeah, it can, it can take away a job as well you know um it, it can do that but what i find is that it's a sustaining energy so sometimes it, it can be it can sustain what what is but sometimes it doesn't let you grow or expand too much so let's say you lose a job well you'll get another similar job right but it's like it's a sustainer there that's what i've found it to be personally but like if you really want to grow when Kate is in the 10th, that's difficult. But because you've got this Mars aspect onto Kate in the, in the 10th, that could bring some growth into your life, possibly. That's something to observe. Now, Mars is casting 8th aspect onto Saturn in your second house. Family relationships could be quite challenging at this time. Yeah, there, there is this thing, Capricorn, here, where I kind of feel like... Um, I also had the note up here, which I didn't read. You could be disappointed by others at this time. It's like people could let you down at this time, okay? And that's why I say don't, just try not to expect too much from other people and focus your spiritual work and, and focus on yourself at this time. That's, that's just going to be better. Yeah, family relationships could be quite challenging at this time. There could be stuck situations in key relationships that are highlighted at this time. So I just have the note here, learn and adjust your future plans. There might, it might be that you can't do anything right now, but there will come a time where you will be able to move and make changes and grow. And, you know, it's, it's going to shift. It's all going to shift. So you just keep hanging in there, Capricorn. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now I've got here that Mars is a neutral energy for you. And if I click into BV Raman, yeah, he's, he's got here that Mars is a benefic, but I am not agreeing with that because uh, why am I not agreeing? Well, you see Parashara's light says that it's a malefic, but I don't think it's a malefic. I think it's a neutral because it's lauding your 10th and 3rd houses, yes. So I, I see it as a neutral for you. All right, I'm not concerned. Uh, the computer might be counting it as malefic because it's lording the third. That's, that's probably why. I've got here, across May and June, Mars transits your sixth house. Oh, it's a beautiful transit. Uh, and now this is 10th May onwards and all of June. So he's transiting your sixth, that's great. When Mars transits the sixth, he profits, he does well. So this is great energy for progress in your career. It will help you be more productive. Uh, you will do well against the competition. And if you're involved in any legal cases, those should move forward at this time, or you should be able to make progress in a legal case of some kind. So this is, this is good energy here for you. Now Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in the ninth. This might help you skill up or learn new things or find new mentors, find new gurus. Mars is casting 8th aspect onto Saturn in your first house. This could be really good energy to help you put your plans into motion. But equally, this could be tiring physically. You've got Saturn basically in your sign. And Saturn is now wanting to create all kinds of big new 30-year cycles. You know, so you, you, you must be planning quite a bit or strategizing or coming up with these big long-term plans. You're going to have some energy come in here. You could be able to, yeah, as I say, put your plans into motion, but just take care of your physical energy. If you're feeling tired, don't push it. Rest. Okay. Really, really important. I have the note here. Observe and see how this energy goes for you. Aquarius, 
There's some good energy here for you. I'm really happy. You're one of the lucky three good transits in here. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Mars is a benefic energy for you. Mars rules your ninth and second houses. And across the month of May and June, he transits your fifth house. So this is from 10th May onwards and all of June. Mars transiting through your fifth house is good energy to spend time with your children. Okay, so this is good. This is good, fun energy. Spend time with the kids, you know. Uh, I've got here engage in sports, etc. Be with your children, have fun, play. And I've got here, but be gentle with your kids, you know, because Mars in... The fifth sometimes can be like you could be an army general with the kids, you know, so go easy on them. I've got here great energy to be creative. Now, the only tip is don't be in a rush or don't be impulsive. Your expenses could also go up at this time. Now, Mars casts fourth aspect onto Ketu in your eighth house. This is good energy that can help you clutter clear your space or alchemize something. It's like there's something you need to transform. And, you know, clutter clearing and, and just organizing your house, sometimes that is just creates such a huge transformation and energy flows better and you feel more organized and, you know, you're able to be more creative, all that stuff. So that could be the alchemy that you do, but equally the alchemy could be anything, but you've got some kind of alchemical transformative energy here that you can play with. Now Mars is casting 8th aspect onto Saturn in your 12th. You might be feeling restless. You might be feeling like you need a short getaway. Um, if you can get away, have a little trip, then do so. But equally, you can escape into great books, great films, or great spiritual teachings. That's what I do all the time. Always escaping into a good book or a good video sometimes, you know. I've got the note here, Saturn is getting you to go within. Do that as much as possible, definitely over the next two years, but equally over this transit, you know, um, it could also be good, good time to, to direct your attention within. That's always the thing to do, isn't it, Pisces? But thank you so much. For tuning in and I want to thank anyone else who's watched the whole video how are we doing on time we're all good here and I'm just gonna check the time yeah it is late here in London do you know what I'm really looking forward to I can't believe this I'm wishing the summer away I'm really looking forward to when it gets dark at like 4 30 or 5 here because when it's dark early then I can get my videos done early too because I need the night energy to make these. So I start these, I usually start these at about like nine, which is in my world a little bit late because <laughs> I love to sleep. I always have, uh, I always sleep early. Anyway, Pisces and anyone else who's watched the whole video, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for all your comments. And this is such a great community. I want to thank you all for, for being part of it and I look forward to seeing you next time.